The museum where they had the Bruegel exhibition, the Kunsthistorische Museum in Vienna, is just ridiculously opulent, full of marble, gold, black marble, onyx, big marble staircases. I only had one day in Vienna, so I basically went twice to the exhibition. I went during the day, uh, spent about four hours just going round and looking at everything in it. And then I went back again in the evening when I could get a guided tour, not just me, obviously a whole group, and uh, you know get some real insight. One of the main reasons I am particularly interested in Bruegel is his depiction of everyday life, common people, peasants, the traditions, the games, children's games, all the rites and carnival. I particularly like the carnival scenes and his inclusion of that rebellious, riotous side of life. He has quite a number of paintings which show that the influence of Bosch. Dulgret is based on a Netherlandish character, which would be the equivalent of Mad Meg. It shows this strong kind of warrior woman, a giantess almost, in, in relation to everybody else in the picture, striding across the middle of the picture. But she has all the good stuff in the basket. She's gathered up the jewels and the wealth. And what I really love is the details in the background of this army of women who are putting to death a whole pile of demons, you know, they've got them by the throats, they're taking their knives to them. And it really does have a great powerful energy to it. They really look like they are doing the job and doing it right and thoroughly enjoying it. He has a painting called The Triumph of Death, which is quite frightening, even when you're used to seeing all sorts of skeletons and so on. It's armies of skeletons herding people into hell, essentially, but there's just no redemption in it, there's no hope, and it is it's a very, very dark painting. Not much is actually known about him. They don't even really know for certain when he was born. Trained as a miniaturist, he was taught that skill of miniaturism by a woman who ended up being his mother-in-law and was the wife of his master in painting when he was younger. So obviously he really translates that into his paintings. The paintings themselves are quite big, but actually most of the things going on and the interactions happening between all the figures in it, they're all tiny, they're really, really small. And when you see them in real life, it's absolutely unbelievable how anybody actually managed to paint them. In Hunters in the Snow, there's a whole skating scene going on in the distance and it's got all these tiny little figures and it could be any time in any period. They're all just falling over, pulling each other around and their heads are only literally two millimetres across in the painting and they still manage to have noses and skates and actual expressions in just the way they're moving. I mean, he captures it so well. He's obviously spent a huge amount of time just observing people, interacting in social situations, probably drawing them and so on. To be able to capture the movement with a couple of little smudges of paint is quite something. He has all these techniques for drawing your attention to something in the painting. A lot of the scenes, he will place larger figures close, but they're facing away from you. So you're, you're kind of looking into a picture with them. And he does these things with really significant scenes, such as the adoration of the, the Magi in the snow, where they're lost in the, in the busyness of the picture. You know, you have to look really hard to see what's going on. They're shown as part of an everyday scene, everyday life is going on around them. Christ carrying the cross, he's in the middle of the picture, but there's loads of activity going on. There's people not even looking, they're going on about their business, they're eating cherries. There's a kind of festival atmosphere about it. And you have to look really hard to even find the figure of Christ in the middle of it.
And I think what you really get from all this miniature activity that's going on in these massive landscapes is the, the power of nature and how trivial man can be in relation to that. All their little toings and froings, you know, it's just like a little army of ants, really. But also how important all their little traditions and customs are that make up a life. He has a little painting of five beggars and it's just a really human snapshot of real life. Probably one of his most famous, these kind of peasant events and the peasant wedding, the bird nester, it's the peasant dance. And they, they are so contemporary looking in their expressions, the way they sit, the two guys having talking business in the corner, the greedy ones trying to get as much of the wine as possible, despite the clothes and the funny pointy shoes and so on, it's, it could be any wedding anywhere. He has a great painting, which is one of the few larger figure paintings he does, which is another adoration of the Magi. Again, everybody is crowded into the frame. There's just a lot of figures in it. Each figure has a very definite personality and very definitely something going on with them. And I really like, uh, I think it's Joseph behind, somebody's whispering something to him. Not sure what, but it's, it's the expression on his face that really comes across. For me, he's something of a pioneer, something of a, a subversive, even. Painting at a time in the 16th century when a lot of painting would have been done to please and court the wealthy classes. You kind of see that he sneaked a lot of little details in that maybe wouldn't necessarily have been desired by his patrons. He generally seems to have a real love of humanity, but also it's not a classical sense of beauty. He's showing the beauty in the everyday, literally warts and all. It was well worth spending the whole day just immersed in it. A lot of ideas, a lot of, I just, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about how it's done, how it should be done.